It's midsummer. A normal day on the farm now looks like this. I get up at 7, and after my first cup of coffee, I give Lakota her morning pills before getting outside to check on my strawberries. And after eating every strawberry that I could find, I go back inside to work on Lakota's special balm using the herbs that I picked earlier. I then attach the rear mounted bucket on the big mass to collect some wood up in the forest that I cut in the springtime. So, I head to the woods. But, then I forgot that I have to water the magnolia tree, which was a gift from my mother, so I have to drive back home. Finally getting to the forest and collecting the wood and bring it back home. I decide to take a trip to a nearby forest to look for some mushrooms to use for my dinner. And I do find some delicious penny bun mushrooms. While being out on the road, I decide to take a stop at my workshop to rebuild the Defender. Because by selling some of my expensive parts that I have bolted to it, I can generate some income. So, I take the wheels off, replace them with some original wheels, and do some touch-up paint. I put the big wheels up for sale, and it doesn't take long before someone buys them for 2000 euros. Happy with the result, with the new traditional Land Rover look, I head home. It's getting late now, so I rush home to mow the lawn with my favorite machine. My John Deere 110 from 1965. Then I need to water the magnolia tree again, and my sunflowers. After soaking my plants, and myself included, I changed to a dry t-shirt and hook up this old potato ridger I restored. To reach my rows of potatoes and vegetables to prevent weeds from taking over my crops. Then as evening comes, I give Lakota her night pills. Before I watch the sun go down, and I take a couple of minutes to reflect on the day. Then I go to bed early, knowing that soon, things are going to get really busy. Since I decided to use this entire summer to train my dog back on four legs, I must have that as my main focus and job, and have a strict training discipline. So, being a small-scale farmer brings the perfect work balance. But the real farmers, on the other hand, they have a busy time harvesting the early winter barley. While I am heading to the veterinarian, because the time has come to take Lakota's braces off. Arrived at the veterinarians, Lakota gets shot. And by using similar tools that I have in my own toolbox, the braces get removed. And everything looks pretty good, but she does have to have a shin inside her leg for the rest of her life. But that shouldn't be a problem. The next day, Lakota was nothing like this. She was slow and limpy and struggled.
and I tried to take her for a walk, but uh, it's a hopeless case. She doesn't want to go. I really want to train her back, and I will do my best to do so. And I will use this summer to train her leg and not feel sorry for her. If I ever will get her back to health, I cannot feel sorry for her. Because the only way to do this is to pretend like everything is normal. That she can have a good life. She might not be able to do the hardest trips anymore. But that's okay. She got the power in her hand to shock you like you won't believe. I saw her in the Amazon with voltage running through her skin. Standing there with nothing on, she gonna teach me how to. Every day I train her, and I trust the process of her using her leg. Shock me like an electric eel, baby girl. Turn me on with your electric feel. And it looks promising. And she gets better every day. From walking short distances in slow tempo, we gradually work upwards and walk further and further every day. After four weeks, the progress is remarkable. She's walking pretty good. Her leg seems to heal pretty, pretty fine as well. Oh, you can feel it in your mind. Oh, you can do it all the time. Plug it in, change the world. You are my electric girl. But back home at the farm, the to-do list is pretty long. And my old John Deere mower needs a new dry belt. But these old machines are pretty easy to work on, so shouldn't be too much of a hassle to change. I load up my little trailer with wood boards and take a drive around the property to do some maintenance on the different buildings. The days are relaxing. I am enjoying everything I do and I work in my own tempo. And if I don't get around to do everything I plan for the day, it is always a new day tomorrow. No rush. But I do have something to show. The last days I've been busy and I built this shed to house my little Massey and some different implements. It's nice to get it on the roof and some fresh pine tar on the walls makes it look and smell good. But today's big project is to split some wood. I 
I managed to find a reasonable wood splitter for sale. I bought this old thing from a uh, retired farmer. Put some paint on it. It looks like new again. It's really does the job. This dry spruce splits very well. And this little red trailer is something I made myself. It used to be an old car trailer. But I made some new axles on it. And put some bigger wheels on it. And I have to say, it looks pretty good. And I tried to make it look like the Massey Ferguson's trailer from the 1960s. And since my brand new shed is fairly empty, I decided to put the entire trailer inside, in case of any rain. But it would turn out that fearing damp firewood was to become the least of my problems. Because it hadn't rained for weeks and it was nothing to see in the forecast. And I am getting worried about my potatoes. They look a bit stressed. Of course I could uh, spray some water on them. But it's limited, because I have well water. All the surrounding neighboring houses are connected on the same well. And using too much water can empty the well. And that means much bigger problems. We desperately need some rain, but the weather gods, they were not listening. And the heat wave continued on for days. And it was hot, and for a Nordic man like me, it is too hot. And even my four-legged friend was struggling in the seat. This severe drought was not just a problem for me, but also for the farmers in the area. And I was beginning to understand why farmers always complain about the weather, because it never does what the farmer wants. I can just pray for some rain. But this nice and sunny weather does mean it's good to be outside to build stuff. So, I had this old pile of bricks laying around. Because I have another project going on. I want to build a small garage next to the log house. But also, I have a plan to build a shed for my big Massey as well. So I begin to build a lean-to roof next to the little red barn. And due to the extreme costs of lumber these days, most of my money goes to 2x4s and wood boards. So I spend the days hammering and sewing and measuring. And I am surprised about my carpenting skills because it actually looks pretty good.
So far, it hadn't been the best paying job I had, being a self-proclaimed farmer. But I would get payments that no money could really buy, which was the quiet and peaceful evenings. Although I was missing my wilderness travels, I really enjoyed being home. It brought me back to my childhood. As a kid, I dreamt about being a farmer. And now I kinda was doing farming. And I didn't really want to be anywhere else than here. And growing up in the countryside, it makes you a bit different. You automatically get a closer connection to nature. You become a warmer and more compassionate person. And animals and nature becomes your closest friends. At least, it was for me. But I need money. I need to do something to boost my income for the summer. So I have to do something drastically. I have to make a sacrifice. So I decide to sell my Land Rover. Rock for a pillow. Cold ground for a bed. I have already a buyer lined up for it. Night sky for a blanket. And it would bring 12,000 euros. For a bed. Which is a great, great thing. Now here's a new. But before I say goodbye to my beloved car, might be me. I want to take one last trip. The next day I pack my rucksack with some sandwiches and coffee and head to the woods. This is the first time we are in the real woods after Lakota's injury and I want to test how she handles it. The lack of rain have made the woods very dry as well, but nevertheless it was good to be back. Lakaura had by now lost most of her thick undercoat, so the heat wasn't bothering her too much. But I let her drink often and rest if she needs. And I do notice she is starting to lay down and her leg is probably aching and I can't push her too much. But a dog that wasn't want to go will just lay down. It's never a point to force them to go. But what felt like a hopeless nightmare just a month ago had already turned around to be a blessing. The fact that I could take my dog on a walk in the woods felt like the greatest gift in the world. I don't know if I was the cause of her rapid healing, but for me it felt like the touch from my hands had a healing effect. And while working and massaging her leg, I tried to picture me bringing her energy up to match mine, kind of like a battery charger that attracts the low voltage battery up towards the high voltage. 
It may be a bad comparison, but for me it made sense. But I don't want to take any risks, and if I continue to walk further into the wild, I might not be able to get her back out again, and I don't fancy carrying her out. She does weigh around 40 kilos. So we have to stop, while she still enjoys it. So we head back to the car. But we will be back in a few weeks time, and I reckon we can walk a lot further. Back home at the farm, I had a problem. All of my potato plants were now dead. But on the bright side, the potatoes themselves looks perfect. And they can be taken up. But that led me into a new problem. Because how on earth can I get all of these potatoes up? 